It's hard to figure out sort of where to start the story, but I, I can tell you that in 1969, I came to Baltimore as a legal aid lawyer. And uh, when I went into my new office, there were a bunch of file cabinets that had a bunch of unanswered prisoner letters in them, four drawers worth. And so I came to this law school and encouraged, solicited volunteer law students to respond to those letters. And I got 20 volunteers in that first group of students. The 60s were a kind of a, a turbulent time in colleges. A lot of young people were very interested in being involved in something that would uh, improve society. The students really began on a volunteer basis, clinical work, and, and we provided legal assistance to a number of those prisoners. I'm very proud that at this law school, both faculty who are, as we say, uh, podium teachers, teachers who speak about theory and substantive law, uh, also engage in clinical opportunities. We have a tradition of legal theory and practice here that sets us apart from other law schools. Uh, and that tradition has uh, reinvented itself from time to time. Well, to me, everything's related. Teaching, scholarship, and service are all related. So certainly, my experiences working with students and my client experiences really very much shape my scholarship. Really, my scholarship, I aim to make their world a better place. I aim to change systems, I aim to change lives. Our goal in clinic is to give these students experiential learning opportunities where they're taking the theory, what they've learned in that first year core curriculum and some of their um, possibly second year courses as well, and putting that into practice for real clients. It's very important for me that the work that I do, the scholarly work that I do, arise out of real life problems and try and solve those problems in some way. So what I do is look at the issues that come out of our clinic cases and try and write in ways that would be helpful uh, around those issues. The work that I do in my scholarship then helps me to teach my students better about those issues, which makes them better advocates for the clients, so it all feeds into each other. The practice uh, sharpens our theory uh, and gives us uh, laboratories for testing out our ideas and inspiring broader thinking about the problems that we're working on in the clinic. But it's actually the, the clients that are in many ways the best teachers to our students. For example, um, going into a hearing, the, it may be the first time a student has ever been in this kind of a hearing, like for, for example a termination of a housing voucher, whereas the client may have been in those kind of hearings before, so they have some information they can provide to the student that's very helpful. Um, so they really is a partnership, so students really le learn to work as partners with their clients in terms of trying to solve difficult problems. For the students to realize that this is no longer just about a grade, uh, but it is about real people's lives. It gives them a heightened sense of professional responsibility. And it's a responsibility that is deeply challenging for some of my students, and it's scary for them. And so one of the things that I, I try very hard to do is make sure that they are equipped with the skills and the knowledge and the information they need to walk clients through that process in a productive way and in a responsible way, but also to let them know that they're not doing it alone. For this first run out, you know, they have got a support network, a, a very sturdy support network, that is gonna ensure that the responsibility they have is not a responsibility they are handling on their own. I feel very much a part of the team, and we all feel like um, we're colleagues working together with the same common goal, and that is to provide professional legal services to the clients. I think it's pretty cool that you can get a chance to meet a lot of people, talk to the students, um, interact with them. You know, just you find out so many things about people in a day to day, and I'm kind of a people person, so you know, I, I think that that's what I like a, a lot about my job. When the students come through, they are constantly saying, uh, at a high percentage rate, over 75%, are saying, clinic changed me as a person. I now understand things that I didn't understand before. I have a better sense of direction than I had before. Even more importantly, a lot of people want to come to law school and they think they want to be lawyers, but they don't know that they want to be a lawyer. And when they take clinic, that's where most of them are getting that aha moment of, oh yeah, I belong. Working with 
individuals who you know you're providing a service to and you know there's going to be an end product that's going to make them happy and seek you know some resolution for them is really the best part of the experience and I think that outweighs me trying to balance my schedule and balance my coursework because this is the most rewarding part of it all and to be a law student and actually get that practical experience is what's really important and is what's going to prepare me for the world beyond law school once I graduate. I think what it, um, clinic has really done in terms of what it means for me long term to be a lawyer is the importance of reflection. The importance of pausing to think about your relationship with the client, your relationship with your colleagues, uh, how that informs the quality of service that you're providing to clients. The clinic was really, you know, showed that if you can practice law selflessly, if you can credit other people or accept that other people get credit over you, um, your client's going to get the best services your client can get. And that's something that I try to employ now um, in my practice, and it's something that I learned here. We have a 40-year-old program that has been a leader in the field because we haven't been content remaining where we are. Um, we were, we were pushing experiential learning when pushing experiential learning was not a trendy topic, so to speak. Um, and so I think that we can't be complacent, that that's, that's not um, the job of, of a leader in this field. And so I would hope that we wouldn't just rest on our laurels. That said, I think we should be very proud of the incredible work we've done. You know, for 40 years, lawyers and law students at Maryland Carey have, have provided probably, if you had to average it out, millions of hours of free legal service to the residents of the state. And that's something I think we should be very proud of. That experience has built a deep well of expertise among the faculty that are teaching in the clinic, among the students who are coming through the clinic. Um, and that is something that we should continue to tap to provide additional services in, in meaningful ways. My experience over these past four years of having uh, the law students as my students uh, is that uh, they will do well because uh, I don't think too many environments will surprise them. Well, I think we're in a very interesting times in legal education. We see that there's a, a greater acknowledgement of the necessity of students having client-based experiences during their law school years. And the future of our program, I see us growing. I see us trying to reach more, even more people, but I also see us learning from what other law schools are doing, learning from what our colleagues are doing, um, and just trying to be the best program we could be in ways that meet the needs of individuals, families, and communities in Maryland and beyond.